Welcome to the Picanduino introduction video. In this video we're going to be covering a Picanduino hardware walkthrough, software installation including drivers, and code examples. The Picanduino features a direct to USB connection and an FT232RL chip to allow the microcontrollers to communicate with the computer. There's a transmit and receive LED for the FTDI chip, a power LED, and then two LEDs for each microcontroller to allow you to experiment right out of the box. A 3.3 volt regulator is provided to power up the low voltage PIC 18F25K20 microcontroller, which is located here. There's a reset button for the PIC microcontroller and the AppMega microcontroller, and also a microcontroller select switch, which allows you to choose which microcontroller has access to the USB port. Looking underneath the Picanduino, there is the AppMega 328 microcontroller, a 74244 octal tri-state buffer chip, a low forward voltage drop diode to cut off the USB port power when an external supply is used, and a 16 MHz oscillator to drive the microcontrollers. To download the Amicus 18 IDE, just open up a web browser and navigate to www.myamicus.co.uk. Click on the green download Amicus button. Here it's asking you to make sure you have MPLAB IDE downloaded and installed, but I've found that you don't actually need this. So just click on the I have downloaded and installed MPLAB IDE, and it will take you straight to the download. It's a 52 megabyte file, so just give it a couple of minutes to download. To download the Arduino software, just open up in your web browser www.arduino.cc Click on the download link Scroll down until you find Windows and choose to save the file It's a 91 megabyte file so just give it a couple of minutes to download Now the first thing you'll want to install is the Amicus 18 software this also includes the driver for the Picanduino. So double click on the Amicus 18 setup file and let it run through its install wizard. Click next. Accept the terms. And I'm just going to install it to the default location which is in program files. Don't launch it just yet, and click Finish. To install the Arduino software, just extract the contents of the zip file to wherever you want. In this case, I'm just going to do it straight to the desktop. To install the driver, just plug the Picanduino into a USB port. Windows will detect the new piece of hardware and will start the new hardware wizard. Click No Not at this time to connect to Windows Update and install the software automatically. Click Finish and there's one more piece of hardware to install which is the serial port driver. Again click No Not at this time to connect to Windows Update and install the software automatically. Click Finish and the Picanduino is now ready to use. If for some reason it couldn't find the drivers, they're located in Program Files, Amicus IDE, Amicus 18 USB Driver. Now that we have all the software and drivers installed, we can start experimenting with the Picanduino. First up, we're going to look at the Arduino software. Open up the Arduino folder and click on arduino.exe. Before we open up any code, go to Tools, Board, and make sure you've got Arduino Nano with AtMega328 selected because that's a particular microcontroller the Picanduino has. 
For our first example, we're going to be looking at making one LED flash on and off. This is called the Blink example and it's built into the Arduino software. Just go to Open, Basics, Blink. This is going to blink an LED on and off that's connected to digital pin 13. The good thing with the Pic Arduino is, is that there's already an LED connected to pin 13 built into the Pic Arduino board itself. Before we hit compile, just make sure this switch is flicked down to the AtMega position so the AtMega has access to the USB port. Upload the code. The Arduino software will compile it and then send it to the Pic Arduino. We now have a single blinking LED which is connected to digital pin 13. If you wanted to be a little bit fancy, you could scroll down and modify the code slightly. Here we have a delay that keeps the LED on for one second or here 1000 milliseconds. If we change that to 250, it'll hold the LED on for just 250 milliseconds while holding it off for 1000, which is one second. Let's upload the changes. And now you can see it's off for a second and on for only 250 milliseconds or a quarter second. You can feel free to experiment with this code a little more yourself. Now let's try this blink example but using the PIC microcontroller and programming in Amicus 18. To do this we first need to make sure the PIC at Mega switch is flicked to the PIC position. Open up Amicus 18 IDE Go to Open, Samples, scroll across until you find Blink.Bass. You may be able to see here that it's very similar to the Arduino code, but we're actually programming in BASIC here instead of in C. So if we have a look here, we've got an LED connected to port C, pin 2. So there's 8 pins on port C, and it just so happens that the PIC Arduino has an LED connected to port C, pin 2. Then what we're doing is we're turning that LED on, delaying for one second or a thousand milliseconds, then we turn it off, and then delay for another thousand milliseconds or one second, and then we just repeat the process over again. So let's send the uh, code to the device. And now we've got a red blinking LED, on for a second, off for a second. Now just as we did for the Arduino code, let's try changing this from being on for a full second to being on for just a quarter second or 250 milliseconds. And there it is, on for a quarter second, off for a full second. Let's change it back to a full second and let's get a second LED working. So let's copy and paste this. And let's call this LED2. And the Pic Arduino has another LED connected to port C pin 1. Let's copy this. Oops. And paste. and change it to low. So while the first LED is on, the second LED is off. We'll hold that for a second. And then they'll switch. So two LEDs, one connected to port C pin 2, one connected to port C pin 1. We start off with the first LED on while the second LED is off and we hold it for a thousand milliseconds. We then switch it. So after that second is gone, we now turn off the first LED, turn on the second, and hold that for a second. And then we just keep repeating that. Let's compile and program to send it to the device. And now we have our two blinking LEDs.
Now let's try have the Picanduino communicate with the computer via the USART. To do this, open up Arduino and make sure the PIC at Mega switch is selected to the at Mega position. Go to Open, Communication, ASCII Table. This piece of code here, if you scroll through, makes the Picanduino or the at Mega chip on the Picanduino send serial data through the USART port to the USB port of the computer. We're setting it up for 9600 board and it's going to send a whole heap of ASCII data which is going to get printed on the screen. Upload it to the device and then click over here to the right to open up the serial monitor. What's happened here is we've loaded the Picanduino or the App Mega chip on the Picanduino with some code that is going to run through a loop and print out all the ASCII characters, their decimal, hexadecimal, octal and binary counterparts. Everything from an exclamation point right down through the different characters, numbers and letters, capital and lowercase. If you reset the App Mega chip by pushing this button, it will run it all again. Let's try some serial communications again via USART, but this time we'll use the PIC microcontroller instead of the App Mega. To do this, make sure the PIC App Mega switch is flicked up to the PIC position. Open up Amicus 18 IDE, click Open, Samples, and scroll across until you find the Hello World example. This is a very simple piece of code. We're simply going to write Hello World, followed by comma 13, which means carriage return. We're going to delay by a quarter second, and then we'll repeat the process. Compile and program to send it to the device. and then open up the serial communicator so we can see what the Picanduino is trying to tell us. Click File, New Connection, so we can connect to the Picanduino. And there it is, Hello World, Carriage Return, and then it just repeats itself. Let's modify the code slightly to say, Hello, Picanduino. And let's put in a couple of carriage returns. Compile and program to send it to the device. And let's open up the Amicus 18 serial terminal again and connect. So now we have Hello Picanduino followed by three carriage returns. You can feel free to experiment with that code a little more yourself. Now I've actually made a simple application that allows you to use the PIC microcontroller on the Picanduino with more IDEs than just the Amicus 18 version. You can use it with Swordfish, which is my favorite. You can use it with MP Lab, and just about any other IDE that supports the 18F25K20 microcontroller. To get this software, just open up your web browser and go to bradsprojects.com. Click on the projects link, scroll down to Picanduino, and then scroll all the way down to the bottom to the download section. You will need two pieces of, um, sorry, two files for this. You'll need the Amicus 18 auto uploader, and in conjunction with that, you'll need the Amicus 18 loader. Just click the here links to download them. I've already downloaded these to the desktop. Now before you can use it, you just need to copy this amicus18loader.exe file to your C drive. Copy it. Go to C drive. And just paste it in there. Now open up the amicus18 auto uploader. 
choose run if it asks you. Now what the auto uploader does is it allows you to open up a hex file that you're working with. It will monitor the hex file and as soon as it detects a change in it, it will automatically load the Amicus 18 loader, attach the hex file to it so it can send it to the Picanduino device. The reason the hex file will have changed is because you're using your IDE to work on the code and then you compile it. So I'm going to open up a simple Knight Rider program I came up with. And the auto uploader will automatically load this to the device as soon as you try and open it up. From there, we can either enable to auto upload or we can disable it. In this case, we'll enable it. Now I wrote this program that you're seeing here in Swordfish. So if I now work on this piece of code by changing the delay perhaps to 50 milliseconds instead of 200, and then compile it. Once compilation is finished, it will update the hex file. And because the hex file has now been updated, the auto uploader has detected that and it automatically attached it to the uh, loader program. And now it's been sent to the Picanduino device. And you can see the LEDs are flashing a lot faster. If I disable the auto upload and then change my code again, and compile it. Even though I've compiled it, I've actually disabled the auto upload, so nothing will happen. If I enable it again, and compile, now it will attach it to it and send it to the device. This auto uploader should work with any IDE that supports the PIC18F25K20.